Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about an IP camera. I know, shocking right? But I want to talk about a camera that has impressed me, at least on paper. Today we're going to do a hardware review of the Anker C800. It's a next gen IP camera for the more affordable buyer. And although today's video is largely going to be about the hardware and talking about what it can do in today's hardware review, I'm looking forward to part two when we're going to be doing the software overview of this camera and we're going to be utilizing their own software and utilizing it with a NAS. Now, why is that a big deal? I've done a lot of cameras on this channel where I've taken advantage of IP cameras to be used in conjunction with a NAS. This isn't the first and it's not gonna be the last. So why should you care? Well, because this is the first time we've had an affordable 4K IP camera. That's right, bung it in your diaries, update your calendar. We are now at the point where you can get 4K surveillance cameras in your home for under 100 quid. This camera here arrives at 89 NICA right now, 89 pounds including tax, and it's a 4K surveillance camera. And I know a number of you straight away are thinking, it's a bit overkill, isn't it? Who, who needs 4K on a camera? And you're right, who does? It's business, that's who. It's the idea that once you have a recording, and what you do with that recording ends up governing how much you need to spend. So, put into perspective, if you have a break-in, you kind of want to make sure that it doesn't happen again, but you also want to know who did it and make sure they get their comeuppance. And because of that, camera technology has always been at the point where identification is just as important as just capturing the moment. Having a break in and not being able to stop it means that that person may break into somewhere else. Identifying a number plate, identifying a tool that was used, identifying a pin code put into a door. It's very important resolution. And 4K cameras up until recently were very much the vogue of big end business users that were prepared to throw two, three, four, five hundred nicker at each camera. And what we're looking at today for 89 pounds, remember that, is a power over ethernet camera that supports 4K resolution, is weatherproof, is utilizing a brand new kind of LED technology, is supported by NAS, and is 89 pounds. That's what I'm talking about. This We have talked about cameras on this channel that have retailed generally with the real low end budget home cam stuff around 30, 50 quid, and everything after that, has always been between 50 to 100. I think only twice I've ever had a camera here on the channel that costs more than 100 pounds. And for 89 quid, there's a lot to go on here, but I banged on long enough. Let's see what we get for our money. So this C800 arrives in this incredibly dull box. And again, not a huge surprise. We see a lot of these camera brands out there uh, producing a lot of solutions, but because it's very much an industrial sector, whether you're utilizing it for home or business, they don't go the extra mile on retail packaging. You're not really gonna find this on many shelves in your local e-mart. But what I will say is that although um, Anchor is a brand that a lot of people outside of surveillance have never heard of, of the brands within surveillance, we have seen a lot more. I've mentioned this in other videos before, but we're still very much in the time when there are hundreds if not thousands of camera manufacturers often it's the same camera that's rebadged by different manufacturers and again i'm including anchor in that as well sometimes but of those thousands a few of them have pushed over and into the ranks you've got your top end brands like your axis camera and stuff like that but then underneath you've got this collection of camera brands who have become the authority in affordability. These are your Rio Links, your Hick Visions, your Eddie Max, and your Anke, or Ank, depending on how you wanna pronounce it. Now, with this device, you have got your quick start installation guide, which details in a number of languages how to set the device up for the very first time. And again, this is a wall-mounted POE camera, technically ceiling-mounted, because it is a dome camera. We have got software for installing the device, but to be perfectly frank, if you still have a CD drive, there's something going wrong there. Most of this software can be uh, obtained online, but what I will say is it's utilizing one of those, I don't have huge hands, they're still using those small CDs. But I think, I always associate with about 2001. Um, next, we have the wall sticker for applying the camera uh, to a surface to get the screw holes in, and the device does arrive with screws and raw plugs inside for installing the camera. There's also 
uh, a cap protector for wrapping around the, uh, the LAN connection that goes into the rear of this device to make sure that it's weatherproof and waterproof whilst in utilization. We have got the camera itself, which will get out of the foam. It really is putting up a fight. We have got the screws and the raw plugs. We've got that silicon gel bag for moisture in transit. And that's about it, really. Nothing else in there. Get rid of that. And then we've got the camera. Now, if we unwrap that, we can take a good look at quite a heavy metal camera. Now, bear in mind, this is designed for wall, I'm sorry, ceiling mounting. You can't even operate the motion of this. It does have a vertical direction there. And if we bring it closer to the camera, you can get some idea about the um, lens that's based on this device and that LED. This is a metal ouch uh, camera and again is designed to be weatherproof and again ip67 which means dust proof heat proof to a degree in terms of direct sunlight and stuff like that and of course moisture proof from rain and downpours and stuff like that the device itself again is poe which is always great to hear which means that this device doesn't need to have its own mains power source with which to operate you can connect the device via a cat cable connection there on that cable and that means that not only can you deliver power to the device but it also arrives with support of the data going to and from that connection as well all within one cable also on the other side of things you have got a power connector separately if you choose to utilize a poe injector and that is for those of you that like the idea of a poe camera but really you just want a camera and you're prepared to use mains power to get it poe injectors are sold separately and they're very easy to come by and again the majority of the time if you're buying a poe camera i strongly recommend that you take advantage of poe connectivity because it's efficient it utilizes way less power than anything else and is pretty efficient overall now the camera itself, as you see, has got those two lenses built there into the front. Now, those two on the front there aren't actually both lenses. We've got the lens here on this side, which is our 4K and 1080p lens. It supports four different kinds of file compression all the way through H.264 and 265 to the plus variant, and the top being H.265+, which even utilizing in 4K will still give you five to seven times more recording length which is hugely beneficial because what you want with those compression techniques is to utilize as little space as possible so you can get as many days of retention in those recordings now if you do utilize this at 4k let's be realistic it is still 89 nicker this camera will give you 4k but at 15 frames per second if you lower the resolution a little down a little bit you've got your 1080p's your 720's then you are looking at higher frames per second 20 25 stuff like that but it is an 8 megapixel lens so again a huge degree of um, recording resolution there and for those of the more security conscious that want to see results not just recordings that might be uh, very beneficial to you and something that you may desire in a POE camera like this now Talking about that LED, the LED based there on the front is an EXIR LED. There's actually two LEDs based inside there. Now, I'm saying it's new, it's newer than standard LED technology. You may have noticed me mention other cameras on this channel before that have got multiple LEDs based all around the front. Those are for night vision. So when the camera knows and it sees by the recording that things have got dark, it clicks in with the LEDs and the LEDs assist the system to be able to read uh, motion, depth, everything at night. And that's why you end up with that black and white um, imagery on there. This supports up to 100 feet, so around 30 meters, which is fairly standard. But what makes that system of LEDs improved is its differentiation between standard LEDs dotted around the lens. First and foremost, you get a better area of coverage with this LED. It, rather than standard LEDs that are based around the lens, this gives you a lovely full area of coverage, not just a spherical one, which then has dead zones wrapped around it. On top of that, the heat generated is different as well. Standard LEDs don't generate hardly any heat at all, but um, stylistic standard LEDs that you find on IP cameras compared with these EXIRs, they still generate a little bit more heat the other ones and it does attract insects it attracts spiders it attracts just tiny things which are enough when walking across a lens to trigger a false alert and the last thing you want is spiders webs 
and just detritus around that lens while it's being utilized. Um, on top of that, you've got something called back bleed, which is when lenses that are wrapped, um, sorry, the infrared around the lens can create a kind of aurora effect around the recording space, something that they've tried and successfully um, removed with this new style of LED. Something like this is the first time I've had a camera here in the studio that has it. And I am looking forward to doing a comparison of standard infrared LEDs on an IP camera versus the ones on this. I might even use the Anchor HD that we used in a previous video. I believe that one right there. Now, the camera, as mentioned, is supported in NAS, which is great news. The idea of having a camera that can be utilized in a QNAP or Synology NAS environment with their own QVR Pro and surveillance station applications is great news. It also supports Anchor's own NVRs, as well as pretty much any NVR that allows you to utilize on Viv camera support. That's a kind of a camera that can be um, controlled and operated by a third party system, and this does support that. But if you don't use uh, a storage NVR system, they do have their own cloud system built in, as well as an SD card slot on this device that supports up to 128 gigabyte SD card. So again, lots of localized storage. Personally, I wouldn't recommend utilizing storage devices inside the camera alone and not have a kind of redundant backup sync storage option because if someone steals the camera, they've got your recordings. You might have got a notification to say someone's breaking in, but what you're gonna come into is your place cleared out and a hole in the wall. So I don't recommend it. But there is Anchor's own software that we have already featured in another video, but we will be doing an overview of this camera in NAS environments. We might have a look at the software if it seemingly has improvements with this camera over when we utilized it previously with the other Anchor camera. But if it doesn't, we probably won't make a video about Anchor software. What I really want to see is how well this works in conjunction with the NAS and given the newer generation of NAS with uh, particularly the flagship models like your 920 series or your TS453D, these NASs arrive with better 4K support than ever before in both H.264 and 2.65. So, with, particularly with the QNAP, with its 4K HDMI, it's gonna be interesting to take advantage of a 4K camera to see if the NAS can output that resolution fluidly without any kind of overall resource depletion. But we'll have to wait and see. But this has been my hardware overview of the C800. I genuinely like what I see so far, Although I'm not bowled over by all the choices in terms of design, I'm not a huge fan of a dome, but I do know a lot of you out there are looking for this exact kind of camera. Do let me know if you are interested in learning more about this range of devices. I want to really explore this 4K stuff in terms of IP cameras to see if it's all bluffing because it just seems almost too cheap for 4K. But I'll have to check that out in the next video. If you have enjoyed this, click like. If you want to learn more, click subscribe, and I will see you next time.